Hello everyone and welcome to Painless Universal Conversation with myself and Walsh. Today I'll be talking to Sharon Denise. She's an Angolan Portuguese supermodel, I must say, who I am extremely excited to talk to her because, you know, you've seen the pandemic, we've seen everything that's happening in 2020 with um, jobs of supermodels being diminished. She's found ways to become creative and how to sustain being on top. She was on top. She was a model for Victoria's Secret from 2012 to 2015. And she's done various campaigns for all the a lot of top magazines, um, outlet retails. Now you Google her name, she's out there. She'll be telling us what her journey is and how she's managing to stay on top to keep herself relevant in today's world. I'll just give you a little bit of her bio so some of you get to know her. For those of you who don't, although she'll be telling us about herself, but who is Sharon Denise? She is known professionally as Sharon. She's an Angola Portuguese fashion model and businesswoman. She's also known for her appearance in Victoria's Secret fashion show. She's been on the cover of GQ Portugal and Vogue Portugal. Um, and Vogue Portugal. Her first modeling job was in 2011, Victoria's Secret Spring Advertisement. She appeared in Soho Billboard for Seven, Seven for Mankind Jeans. She's worked for various, you know, like I said initially, she's worked for various runways from Behrman, Calvin Klein, um, Vivian and Westwood, you name a, to name a few. She's appeared in magazine, various magazines cover uh, Allure, Cosmopolitan, Spot Illustrator, Swimwears, and others. In Portuguese, she's given the Globus de Oro, which is equivalent to the Global Globe Award for Best Female Model. She's appeared in the Made in Portugal ad. I am extremely and honorable excited to talk to her to, this afternoon to understand real issues on the affecting body and how she got into her careers and to advise you guys who, women who are out there looking to follow in her footsteps what to do to still stay relevant in today's world meet shara welcome to painless universal conversation with myself and welsh i am super excited to have you shara um i had to look up how to say your name so i didn't say it wrongly <laughs> I'm so happy to tell us, Emelina, you're a gorgeous lady and you've really done incredible work. I said a little bit about you in the intro. Before we get into our conversation, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, Sharam? All right. So Sharam is an African girl, Angolan, born and raised, uh, full of dreams since she was little, very energetic friendly uh not as curious i get i'm getting i guess i'm getting curious or more curious now that i'm getting older uh and i would say that one of her biggest challenges since she was little was to deal with competition and rejection because she was always very competitive, but she didn't know how to lose, you know? And as I was growing, and from the moment that I started my uh, modeling career, uh, I took things for granted at some point, you know, as human. <laughs> uh, and then when I realized, I was like, damn, yeah. If you really want to do great, you have to be self-motivated. You cannot wait for other people to tell you, no, you should do this, you should do that, that's how you should do it. No, you more than anybody, if you want to change anything in your life, you have to be the one standing up and you know have your goals, your focus, and keep on trying because in Portuguese, we have a statement that the no is guaranteed. So you must try and it doesn't matter. Like sometimes it seems like a cliche, but it really doesn't matter how many times you fall. The most important is you getting up. 
straight back up. Yeah. Wow. I love what you said. I love what you said at the beginning is that motivation is found within yourself. It doesn't matter how many PR agents, it doesn't matter how many people you have, that you know, fitness trainer, it doesn't matter having your family around, it's you. You have yeah. to make that decision and say, look, I want to be this person. And then that's, the rest is history. I love that. Thank you so much for starting the conversation in a very beautiful manner, because <laughs> this is so Thank crazy. You. I'm glad. You know, saying that, um, could you tell us about a little bit about your modeling career? How did that get started? So look at this. I always dreamed to be an actress. While I was a baby girl, teenager, I used to act in front of the mirror, like in my mom's room, wearing her clothes, putting her high heels, you know, pretending <laughs> that I was talking to somebody else in the mirror, Some, sometimes putting water in my eyes to pretend that I was crying and arguing with people. So that was always the dream. Mm -hmm. But again, in Angola, we didn't really have uh, too many opportunities as, you know, developed countries with acting schools or nice theaters. And when I had to pick which course I would do it, um, I sat down with my parents and I told them, listen, I want, I want to be an actress. I want to go to arts. And they looked at me, you know, that awkward moment of silence. And my stepdad asked me, are you crazy? Did you lose your mind? <laughs> because like, what are you going to do with art here in Angola? I was like, oh, but you know, this is what I like. This is what like no you're going to you're going to study uh in order to be an independent woman in the future and be able to create you know whatever stability you need for you without expecting to have a husband to do it for yourself and i was like okay so End of the story. I went to science and technology <laughs> to do uh, or to be an engineer. Of course, it didn't go well yeah. because <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> First of all, I was going because my parents literally obligated me. And uh, last but not least, I wasn't good in uh, chemistry or physics. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I started receiving invitations when I was 14 because my mom she used to be a flight attendant mm. so I knew a lot of places and new countries because of her job because whenever I was on holidays or vacations at school I would go with her for a week or two sometimes the weekend and I remember first time they stopped us um well First, first time was probably here in Lisbon because half of my family is from Portugal. So I was okay. always in between, even though I was based in Luanda, I was always in between Luanda and Lisbon. Okay. Um, then Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, Paris, London, you know, and uh, it was constant. Like every time we would go out and Trust me, it wouldn't matter how I was dressed. Uh, in Angola, one guy uh, approached me at the beach and he looked at me and told me, you, you're you probably 14, 16 years old, right? And I was scared. I was with my cousin. I was like, oh God, how does he know? Because he was staring at me. You know, I would look and he wouldn't even, you know, move his eyes. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> So he said, oh, you know what? I work at the modeling agency in Portugal. You have a nice height and body. You should try. But I mean, at home, this subject was a completely taboo. Yes. The miracle happens when I met my sister-in-law, the girlfriend of my brother, my older brother. She used to be a makeup artist. 
a professional makeup artist in Angola, in Luanda. And it was fashion week time or fashion week season. Um, and she told me, Sanam, would you like to come uh, and watch one of the fashion shows? I asked my mom, of course, nah, because we had rules. <laughs> Midnight, Cinderella needed to be home. <laughs> so, of course. <laughs> I mean, if you're not walking, it's fine. You're just going to watch, so it's okay. And uh, after the show, there was an after party and the owner of the event came to me and gave me her card. And I was like, um, you're just wasting your time, your cards, because I already know the answer for that. Yeah. You know, my parents won't let me do it either way. She was like, no. Uh, you know what? Tell your parents I want to talk to them. Just come to check it out, the agency, the environment, and then after that, you guys decide. I was already like dreaming. Oh my God, I really want to do it. I want to go. Na, na, na. Uh, my mom, because I guess moms will always support no matter what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My mom went with me. She decided to see, to check. Um, and I started, I, I remember I, they invited me for um, a modeling contest competition. I won uh, and that's how it started. My stepdad at the moment, at that, at that time, they were married. So my stepdad was, kind of my dad that was like the male figure that I had at home even though I had a very good relationship with my biological dad at the time but he was that one person 24 7 you know to uh, tell me the truth <laughs> whenever I needed to hear <laughs> out loud so I guess he was happy but he couldn't really show Mm. Uh, because scared as parents they are scared of what this world mm -hmm. can do or make us and years after while I was growing I could see that and understand why they were so scared mm -hmm. but what can I what can I tell you I guess it's a matter of trust uh, you having communication with your children, you know, mm -hmm. telling them not just protecting all the time or being protective, mm -hmm. but show them the risks that they can find, find mm -hmm. or the risks and decisions that they should make in order for our better self, I guess. Yeah. So my dad, he used to say, people only go if they want to go. Mm. It doesn't matter if you have a friend that it's a drug addict. Mm. It doesn't mean that you're going to turn yourself into a drug addict because you have a friend. So you can see what is happening to that person, yes. you know? So it's up to you to decide if you want to go or not. So we made an agreement. If my grades in school were too low, I would stop immediately. And that was the biggest motivation I had to keep up with the studies. Oh my yes. goodness. I really love that, uh, Sharam, because you really go into details about, you know, you see today's models and how easy some of them get it because they just their parents don't really understand the real downside of modeling, but your parents were very good parents in the sense that they really monitored you and understood from day one that a model is not just a model if she doesn't have something to fall back on and all the dangers alongside the modeling. But what is so inspiring about your story is that you went on to achieve great success. You went on to start modeling for so many big names. How did that come about? How did this a girl from Angola become this huge star, now even modeling for Victoria's Secret? How did that happen? 
That happened in 2012, my first trip to New York. And believe me, I used to cry almost every single day. <laughs> I used to work from Monday to Monday, which would be a dream for every single model, you know, being busy, getting all the jobs, making money, being able to start uh, your independence. And uh, I wasn't feeling complete. Mm -hmm. I always missed my family. Uh, and I always felt like, okay, I'm not a 100% happy. You know, if I have, if I have a job, okay, yes, I should be glad and thankful, but I'm not with my family. If I'm with my family and work is not going well, then you with your family, you start hating your family because you're not working, you know? So it was always a, a mix of feelings. Um, people, people sometimes they, they only see the big picture and the fun side of the stories, mm -hmm. but they never put on, on the table like the sacrifices that most of us have to do from giving up to our, to our uh, life, I guess, with yeah. friends. I remember there was a point or there was a certain time that I was working nonstop and I would, I would miss uh, parties, I would miss weddings, I would miss a lot of things from friends and family and I would get frustrated. Like, I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm accomplishing a lot of things that I always dreamed of or yeah. wanted to, but at the same time, I'm losing some part of me, of my, uh, I don't know, your who you of are, my life, your, family, your yeah. life, the other side of your life where people are enjoying, yeah. So it was, the truth is, I could never really enjoy as I wanted because I was always thinking of what I didn't have at that moment. Yeah. I don't know if this makes sense. No, it does. It does. Because even myself, I have a chronic illness. I think you're always in balance in the sense when you're doing well, you're never happy. And when you're not doing well, you're not happy because you always feel left out, imbalanced with life. But I had to learn. I had to learn to say, you know what, appreciate and accept and be happy that opportunities or non-opportunities come for a reason. And I think it's actually fascinating hearing it from you that someone in the modeling career who is so successful also goes through such issue. You know, sometimes we always think with chronic illness, it's just us with chronic illness that go through issues. Um, and hearing it from yourself that I think because it's also when you come from a certain family where your family is also together, when you're not with them, you feel that left out, that they're doing things, they're all happy, they're enjoying their own space, and you're all here doing all the hard work. <laughs> it's always hard to balance, but it, it, I love that you've managed to do it. But I, I, I really want to touch on when you got that call to do the Victoria's Secret show, how was that? I, could, I couldn't sleep the entire week. I was so, I was so anxious, <laughs> I was paranoid to the point that everything I would do it, I would do it so carefully, you know? Cause I was scared that something would happen to me physically yes. and I would be able to do the show. Cause I was like, it's, it's not possible. You know, I'm gonna be close to Adriana Lima or Candice Sonapuel, Alessandra Ambrosi. I saw the shows, the previous shows so many times, I lost like maybe a hundred times to really believe that I could be there, you know, and practice at home, like back and forth, a literal corridor. I remember because in my first year, I spent five months at the modeling, at the model's apartment mm -hmm. from my at the time. And you know, another, another story, I could write, write a book from the episodes that I have, uh, but there was always girls coming in, coming out, 
and you know everyone was so excited about it like oh my god you got the casting for Victoria's Secret this is major because I didn't know that not all the girls were called to go to the casting uh-huh. it's yeah. not like hey all you know, New York Paris Milan London people models will be here yes but I mean not everyone of course because otherwise it wouldn't be uh, enough space for all of us but when I got the the call back then when I I was like okay this is about to happen because I believe I'm 29 years old now I'll be 30 in March and I believe that I'm very uh Like my intuition is very strong. Mm-hmm. And whenever I don't trust my gut or I don't listen to myself, shit always happens, yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I had the feeling that that moment was about to happen. And I guess I prepared myself for it and I deserved it. Yeah. This was the first year, 2012. Mm-hmm. 2013, uh, that's when I found out that I wouldn't be at the show again. And that's when the, the reality uh, kind of... Really kicked showed. in, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's exactly what I said, you know? Mm. As models, our main tool is our body, our image. Mm. Of course, if we are well with ourselves here, it's maybe 50 or 60% mm. of the work done. Mm. But the other part is physical. Is you assuming the, com- the compromise of you know, working out, eating properly, do, doing this or that for when the time comes, you're ready. And I wasn't because I took, you know, I took the things for granted. I was like, oh my God, I already did it last year. So this year is going to be a piece of cake. Nah. <laughs> so God showed me, uh-uh, it's not about your pretty eyes because beautiful girls, there are thousands, millions, billions of them. Mm. Tall, slim, Whatever. Same. So that. think that you gotta work oh. uh, apart from just being a pretty face and uh, having, you know, an, a nice body. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's where it comes, the personality. Oh. You believe in yourself. Try not to compare yourself with others because we tend to do this a lot. The media helps doing this, comparing this model with that model, uh, your friends, your family, you know, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you see, like your family started starts changing because you're becoming known as well in simple things. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's not even to, you don't even need to argue about it, but people will fight like they are in the middle of a match, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi and <laughs> things like that. Um, but I guess this comes with maturity. You really have to go through certain things in order to learn and take what, what really matters from it. But, you know, that, that brings me to my final question. Now, you've done all this. How do you stay on top with the pandemic and everything going on in the modeling world? How do you retool yourself to keep maintaining? Because I always say to people, it's the difficulty is not just being there. It's not getting to that where you need to be. It's staying there and still staying relevant. How do you do that now? If I knew the question, I guess all my dreams would be... <laughs> That's answered. I love that. <laughs> would come true but I don't know but at the same time I never wanted to be the loser you know I never wanted to be that person that didn't try so 
I don't know how my future is going to be, uh, but I'm willing to try whatever it's in my power to make it better, you know? So I guess it's you staying grounded, you having your family, your friends, knowing who you are, um, because what's yours will come to you. If you are, if you're working, of course, it's not like staying in bed all day sleeping and mm. thinking that God <laughs> will send you a, a gift. Yeah. No, but my advice is don't give up. Keep on trying, uh, reinvent yourself. Sometimes our, our mind is, is tricky mm. because we are scared because we didn't, we don't know the result but if we don't take risks we will never know yeah that is so true i love that beautiful um ending message haram you really summarized it we don't know and if we did know who knows what we'll utilize that information for thank you so much for your time and joining me and, and sharing your kind words of wisdom and your story as well really inspirational and i hope inspires millions to take life one day at a time and just yeah. believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and work hard for it. Thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate it. Thank you.